Hi everybody, welcome to our lecture. This is Rodrigo from Learn English Fast and I've noticed the majority of students who are trying to get a great score at international certifications such as IELTS, TOEFL and Cambridge have some difficulties uh, deciding which verb tense would be more suitable in each sentence. Say, this class aims to review most verb tenses which is people taught to learn in language as well. But What's paramount here is to understand exactly when to use each verb tense, and for that, I will give some examples of each case. But before we start our lesson, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the button below, leave your like, and don't forget to press the bell button so that you can follow all my classes, alright? So, let's start with the present simple tense. We use the present simple for facts, habits, and routine. In other words, repeated actions. So, let's see some examples. Example number one. Lucinda Berry writes crime thrillers. That is a fact. That's why it's a present simple tense. The doctor smokes more than I do, and that's a habit, a bad one, all right? And example number three, I go to the gym on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, and that's my routine, all right? Now, we can also use present simple with its state verbs. In other words, when there isn't an action happening, they could be sense verbs, for example, look, smell, taste, sound, and feel, verbs of preference, or even short-term states, for example. These taste like chicken, or you sound like your mother, all right? Let me give you another example. Your skin feels really smooth, or I need some help. This was a short-term state, for example, all right? Now, let's have a look at the present continuous. There are basically three situations in which we would use the present continuous. Situation number one, for actions in progress now or at the moment of speaking, for example. Sorry, I can't help your daughter now. I'm doing my homework, all right? In this case, I am using the verb to be in the present, I am, plus verb ing, so I'm doing, all right? As for the second case, uh, we use it for temporary situations, for example, I'm working from home during the pandemic, but I normally work in an office, okay? So I'm working from home. And the last case, for future arrangements, okay? This is quite confusing because students are used to use will or going to for future. But when we talk about arrangements and I'm talking about a plan that you have decided and organized with another person, in this case, I have to use the present continuous. For example, I'm spending Christmas and New Year with my mom and dad. So, we arrange it, those celebrations together. Or, I'm flying to Paris tomorrow. And in this case, I arrange that with the airline, all right? And the next tense is the past simple. We basically use the past simple to talk about completed past actions and states. And we often specify the time or the event in the past, although this is not a rule. Let's see some examples. Example number one. I bought a new phone last week. In this case, I specified the time, last week, all right? I went to her wedding. In that case, I mentioned the event, okay? And example number three. My grandfather died of cancer, and in this case, he could not have died twice, 
say it was pretty obvious it was a completed state, all right? Now, let's have a look at the past continuous. There are basically two cases in which we use the past continuous. Case number one, we use it to describe actions that were in progress at a particular moment in the past. For example, this morning I was sweating at the gym. In this case, I use the verb to be in the past plus verb with ing. It could be was or were plus ing, all right? And case number two, when we talk about two things happening at the same time, but in the past. For example, the waiter cleared the table while I was still eating. And in this case, I hadn't finished eating, so my meal was in progress. All right? Now, it's time to talk about present perfect simple. Technically speaking, present perfect is formed by the verb have or has plus past participle of any verbs, including the verb have itself. For example, have been, has been, have had, has had. And that was the easy part. However, as I had already explained in a previous video, what can be really tricky is to know when and why it should be used. So, here are eight cases that require present perfect simple. Case number one, we can use it for experience in our life without saying when they happen. In other words, when the date is irrelevant to the context. For example, my son has been to Australia and didn't want to come back to Brazil. Or, I've seen this film three times, all right? Case number two, to focus on present states which started in the past and have continued up to the present. For example, I've lived in London since I was born. Or, I've known Jack since we were teenagers, but I haven't seen him since March. All right? Case number three, to focus on past completed actions which are recent, using the adverb just, or which are connected to the present. For example, I've just sent her a text message or they've just divorced, all right? Case number four, we use it with words like as soon as or when to talk about completed actions in the future. For example, I will leave as soon as I have finished my work or I will send a message when I've got home. So I'm using it for the future, all right? Case number five, for experience during any present period of time, for example, what have you learned so far this year? Or how far have you got at MasterChef this season? Did you get to the finals? Case number six, we use it with superlatives. For example, Rachel is the nicest person I've ever met, or that's the hardest test I've ever tried, all right? Now, let's move to case number seven. We use it with already, just, and yet. For example, I've already done the shop, or I haven't finished reading Harry Potter's book yet, all right? And finally, case number eight, we use it with how many, how much, and how often to talk about experiences. For example, how many companies have you run? Or how much effort have you put in this complex project? All right? Now, let's move to present perfect continuous. And there are three different cases in which you can use uh, the present perfect continuous, which are case number one, when a recently completed action has a result now. 
for example, Mary is feeling jaded because she's been training hard. So that's the outcome of her training, all right? Or Peter is crying because he's been peeling onions, all right? Now the second case, we can use it to describe repeated activities which started very recently. For example, I've been going to church a lot recently, all right? Or I've been visiting my grandparents every day since my grandma discovered a lung cancer. That was a recent problem, all right? In the last case, case number three, we can use it to talk about unfinished activities using how long, for, or since. For example, we have been training hard since the sun came up. Or, Jonathan has been studying for the test for at least eight hours, all right? Now, it's the time to talk about the past perfect simple and there are basically two main reasons why we should use the past perfect simple. Reason number one, for a sequence in the past. In other words, for actions and events that happened before a particular moment in time. For example, I had already left home when the postman arrived. In this case, first, I left my house. After that, the postman arrived in sequence, all right? In the second case, we can use it for reasons after because. For example, I decided to walk home because I had forgotten my oyster card. Basically, oyster card is a card we can use for public transportation, such as buses, trains, and underground, all right? Now, let's talk about past perfect continuous. And unlike the present perfect continuous, which indicates an action that began in the past and continued up to the present, the past perfect continuous is a verb tense that indicates something that began in the past, continued in the past, but ended at a defined point in the past. So everything stays in the past, all right? For example, he had been drinking milk out of the carton when my mom walked into the kitchen, all right? Or I had been working at the company for five years when I got the promotion. So again, I'm showing the progress, the five years, but in the past, and I got the promotion in the past. When, for, since, and before are words that we usually see alongside the past perfect continuous tense. Let me give you some examples. Carol had been walking five miles a day before she broke her leg. All right? Another example. Um, the program that was terminated had been working well since 1992. The simple future tense. The simple future is a verb tense that's used to talk about things that haven't happened yet. So the formula for the simple future is will plus the root form of the verb. As easy as that. For example, this year Jen will read War and Peace. It will be hard, but she's determined to do it. And to make the simple future negative, the formula is will plus not plus the root form. For example, Jen will not quit before she reaches her goal. Or make sure you arrive on time tomorrow because the bus will not wait for you. Another example. He will not say anything bad about his boss. Or, I will not finish my homework in time for class. Now, that is a tip for you. We often use the simple future when we make a decision at the moment of the speech. For example, you look through the window and you say, Oh gosh, it's raining. So, let's just forget Disney World. We will go to the mall instead. Because it's raining, we've changed our minds, all right? Future continuous. 
So the future continuous tense is a verb tense that indicates that something will occur in the future and continue for an expected length of time, all right? It's not forever. It's formed using the construction will be plus the root verb plus ing. For example, Michael will be running a marathon this Saturday, all right? And Eric will be competing against Michael in the race. Now, just to remind you guys, um, that is also a contracted form of will not, which is won't. So you can say won't go, won't be going, won't do, won't be doing, all right? Now, let's talk a little bit about the future perfect simple. This future perfect is a verb tense used for actions that will be completed before some other point in the future. And the formula for the future perfect tense is pretty simple. is will have plus past participle. For example, will have done. Will have done. All right? Let's see some examples. The parade will have ended by the time Chester gets out of bed. Or at 8 o'clock, I will have left. We can also see some negative examples. We will not have eaten breakfast before we get to the airport tomorrow morning. And they will not have finished decorating the float before the parade. All right? Now, let's talk about the future perfect continuous, or also known as future perfect progressive. It's basically a verb tense that describes actions that will continue up until a point in the future. All right? And the formula is basically will plus have been plus the verb root plus ing. When we describe an action in the future perfect continuous tense, we basically project ourselves forward in time and looking back at the duration of that activity. So the activity will have begun sometime in the past, present, or in the future and is expected to continue in the future. Let me give you some examples. It's not difficult. In September, I will have been working at my company for three years. So in this case, I'm showing the progress of three years working in the company. And I don't know if I'm going to work for another 10, 20, or 30 years. Who knows, all right? Another example. At six o'clock, I will have been waiting for 30 minutes. And just as a, as a last example, when I turn 40, I will have been playing the piano for 27 years. So something started in the past, continued to the future, and there is no limit time to end that activity. I might play for another 20, 30, 40 years or until I die, all right? So, I hope you have enjoyed this class. I'd like to thank you so much for being with me all this time. So, I'm going to ask you again, subscribe to my channel, click on the button below, make sure you ask all your friends to join us so they can also get all my tips for international certificates, such as GMAT, TOEFL, Cambridge and IELTS. So, see you guys. I hope to see you next time. Cheers.